Hello everyone, we are at the App Store, here you can see the page of the application, you can see the developer, you can see the description about it, and this is the app that we are going to review today, Draw Things. Many more options compared to different AI generating apps. This app is really for uh, art making and not just for a title and uh, hope for the best. And, and what we are going to show today is how can, can we use it and what are all the different options. Um, shout out to the creator, Lelo, and I'll place a link in the description below. Okay, so this is the home page. Here you can see the area of all the pictures that you are going to generate. In this text box, you can write what you want to be painted in the negative prompt. You can actually put stuff that you don't want to see in your photo, like um, specific humans, uh, specific animals, uh, or anything thing that you can think of. You can just write it in the negative prompt, and then it won't be painted. So the different options, you can see that the creator of the app also wrote a description for every option, which will help a lot. So for the first option is the model. This is the most important one. It takes quite of a disk space to, to have the, uh, each one of these. It can be around two gigabytes for every model. And every model was trained to, to provide different outputs. So um, we have the, the default ones, which are uh, stable diffusion. We have open journey, and there are more complex ones like the anime, um, like the Disney, paper cut, voxel art, and, and many, many more. And you can also, using the manage option, you can give a link um, from any um, other place like Civit AI or um, Hugging Face. Okay, so here um, you can choose the, the general model. Then we have the LoRa's. The LoRa is, a, as, as it says here, low order rank adaption. Um, it's actually what it's trying to help you if the model um, doesn't get you quite to where you want to be then the LoRa will help it to, to will help you to get the right outputs that you would like to have. So there are different LoRa's and again you can click on the manage and add new LoRa's. I won't explain on this channel how to create a LoRa. It's a foodie AI channel not a um, AI generation guide. Um, there are many other channels for that. So again the combination with model and LoRa will help you to get the, the right uh, kind of output that you would like to have. Okay. And then we have the weight. How much would you like the LoRa to take effect into the model? So 60% it's nice, it's, it's, it's a, it means that it will be expressed in the output, but it doesn't mean that it will take over the output. So if you will do uh, 100, uh, more than 100%, um, it means that the output will be mostly like the LoRa and not like the model. Okay, so then we have the control. The control is additional layer of uh, implementation or inputs for the machine to, to understand what we would like to generate. We are not going to use it in our videos. And then we have the strength, which is um, mostly relevant if we are using image to image generation. Um, so uh, again, like the LoRa versus the model, here we are talking about the first image compared to the second image, um, how strong we want the, the, the new image to take, to take effect. Then we have the seed. In general, the seed doesn't mean anything for you, but for the machine, it's probably the most important part. The seed means what will be the starting point for, for the output. The, the starting point of the algorithm will explicitly influence about the final output. So different seeds here will get different outputs. If we will click on that, we can click on the seed, and then we can either generate a random seed every time, we can track history of the seed if we would like to leverage the same seed again and again, uh, which we are using in most of our videos, we are going to use the same seed and the same title and we are going to compare the different models. Then this is the best way to compare the different models because same seed and same title will get the same image. Then we have the seeding mode. In seeding mode, as you can see, it, uh, it tells the machine how to use the seeding. And I've never changed this and if you want you can read online and, and think about changing it yourself. Then, unlike the other uh, AI generating apps, here we have a very um, customized option to choose the, the image size, <coughs> so we can choose much larger images. Then we can also make the images more uh, larger, 
or sharper. It will take a bit more time and more resources, but we can scale the, the image size to be even bigger. Then we have the steps. More steps takes more time. Um, and, and, and we will compare the, ste the steps and the text guidance in our videos. So let's use for a second very high steps. It means put more effort into the, into the output. The text guidance tells the machine how literally, as I said here, how literally does it, does it have to take the text as is and, and or we would like to give it some boundaries or, or less boundaries to generate the outputs. So if we will use a very low text uh, guidance, then it means that it will look at the text that we used, but in general, it is going to have much more room for, for the machine to, to self-express itself. Or if we are going to use a very high text guidance, that it, or if we are going to use a very high text guidance, that it is going to literally take every, every word uh, that we wrote in the text. So the usual uh, text guidance is between 5.55 to 7. Let's go with 7 here. And then we have the samplers. Compare the samplers in our videos. Um, you should read about it. In general, I think the DPM 2M is the default one to go if you are not familiar with it and if you are not going to, to invest the time to read about it. Clip skip is a very advanced property. Um, and if you want, you should read about it. Um, usually I don't change it. Um, but uh, if, you have, if you want to have more control over the outputs, then you should read about it. Same for mask blur. I, I don't I don't change it usually, um, but you should read about it online to decide if you would like to do anything with that. Then we have fast restoration option. So in many of the modules, the machine is not good enough to to draw or create faces. And so there are specific uh, codes models that uh, will help you get the right face impressions or the right face in the output. So this is very important if you are generating pictures of in humans in our videos and the last uh, section is the higher resolution fix which I'm not going to cover at all but again um, you can read uh, everything that you want online and then we have the machine settings this is usually influence how the the resources of the device are going to be used so the first one is um, how, how much we're going to keep the model in the memory in general, I, I don't recommend to change anything here. Um, if you want, you can read about it and understand what are the limits of your machine. But uh, it, with, the, with the default values, it will work on most of the devices. If you will change it or if you will try to boost the, the resources usage, there is a high chance uh, that you will cause the application to crash. So yes, you can play with it and uh, add things to the memory, add more cache size, and use uh, machine learning, and allocate the compute units differently. Uh, but uh, in some cases, it might going to cause the, the application to crash. Okay. So we covered all this in section. Here at the bottom, from the left, we have project. So we can start a new project. We can export the project and maybe use it in a different device. We can rename the project and we can load a project that we worked in the past. Um, I've, I've never used the, the presets. I believe it's a uh, presets of uh, configurations that you can use if you know if you, one of these will work for you in most of the cases that you can set it up. And then we have this one, and so we can apply the eraser. Here we have an actual eraser, so we can erase some stuff. As you can see, it creates different photo. Here we can paint, just a regular painting paint, nothing special. Here we can select. It's very uncommon to use this. And then we can start blank. Here we can take photo. Here we can save the photo that we have created. And here we can share the, the photo that we have created. Okay, here we can shift between the different pictures that we have created. Here we can see all the pictures um, next to each other. And here it, it will show only the generated ones. The, the ones that were created and won't, weren't edited by the software. And here you can choose how many photos you would like to, to generate. 
so um, I, I assume that usually you will uh, use one but I understand if there will be cases that you would like to have a few options okay and um, we are good I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope it will help uh, you understand what we're doing in the videos in this channel thank you very much